Alright, so today is Saturday the 14th. It's the day before the deadline in the slurry van and I've got the tanker on behind me here. And we're heading to the other farm. Now, for starters, I didn't think I'd be doing this job today because the slurry van was officially supposed to end on the, what was it, the 8th? Last, what was that, last Saturday or Sunday? He lost track of dates at this stage. Well, we've got an extension then, which brings it on to this Sunday. So today is Saturday. And the reason I had to leave this to the very last minute is a quite an easy one to work out. I'm waiting for the fields to kind of dry up because we have all our slurry out um, at home and we got that out before the original ban was supposed to come in because I only got a text message the day before that ban was supposed to commence to tell us there was an extension and I had been busting my gut for the few days before that trying to get out. Didn't do a whole pile of harm or anything, but got the slurry out. But this tank over here is half full. We've had three dry days in a row and yesterday especially was a brilliant day. Great wind and everything and the ground is drying up really well. It's not dry, the ground is not dry, but the top of the ground is starting to dry out and it'll give you a wee bit of traction to be able to maybe get in and out of a few places here and there. So this summer, you probably noticed in Ireland it has rained quite a bit and we've had two months of solid rain. The implications of that is this field in particular, when we done our second cut, it took quite a while and it was very late when we got our second cut done. We got no third cut done this year, so that's the first time in 10 to 15 years we weren't fit to make a third cut. We end up having a lot of bales, but that doesn't mean we had a strong crop. That just means we had a wet crop and the wetter the grass, the more bales you have because it doesn't pack as well. But one thing we did fail to get doing this year, and normally we do it after our second cut and our third cut, is we didn't get to come in here and put any slurry on our silage ground after it was cut. That was a big problem for us. Ground was just swimming, soaking wet. There wasn't a mission of the weather or the ground conditions allowing us to do that. Another problem we had this year was our spring didn't come either. Our spring was really wet and cold and ground conditions, again, were very tricky. We were lucky early on in the spring we got some piping done which emptied out this tank up here and allowed some pressure off at home but at the same time it was still wet. So September did come we got uh, lovely weather actually we got 27 degrees nearly some days and we had three or four straight days drying lovely weather. Unfortunately it didn't last long enough and although people did start to get back out in their fields and get a bit of silage made they didn't get enough time to get slurry out. It left it pretty much for a lot of farmers especially in my locality. Ireland changes from place to place and where we are situated here is called a disadvantage area and it's only a couple of counties that are included in that and it means that our ground is harder to work it's wetter heavier ground so we used that window to get a lot of slurry out at home now it was by no means an easy task we did mark the ground quite badly in places but we had to get it out and i've been trying ever since that right up until last week which would have been right up the first week in october trying to put a load out here and there and getting the tanks empty, which thankfully I did. Some of the things you required here, where we are, is to have four months of slurry storage. So four months of winter storage of slurry without needing to go near a field or anything, you need to have that storage for your cattle. Now most farmers will have that. That isn't what the problem is. The problem is, if you take last winter and the winter before into account, it wasn't four months, it was almost six months. Last year actually it was six months of cattle being inside. So this tank for me in particular is one tank that really lets me out there. It runs way out to that far wall, it runs right onto the cubicle, so it's a nice size tank which definitely, definitely leaves me with at least five months of storage once all our tanks is empty, probably a little bit more. I would have loved to have been able to left it for two more days because I've seen the difference from yesterday morning to yesterday evening. Just one day was incredible. Just as I look, I see a tractor and pipes heading down the road to another job. So slurry is going on everywhere at the minute. Unfortunately, one of the things that comes with that is pressure. When you're rushing like this, this is when farm accidents happen. The amount of work we went through yesterday, moving cattle, testing cattle, then getting over here with an agitator, getting this mixed, getting back on the tanker, making the cows, lots of other jobs as well. And I'm only one person. And if you had the extra couple of days, that would take that pressure off you. Now this will be interesting. Let me get in here with it. 
making a mess. I know this is very wet in places, so I'm going to try to pick a spot. I'm driving grass that wasn't raised. All right, so far. I'll just avoid one wet spot that's down here. But not a wet spot, wet section of the field. And keep away from that. Might be all right. We're getting away okay. So far, so good. Why is my... Okay, we have an issue here. Why is my uh, hydraulics not working? That's all wrong. All right. We have one of our pipes all wrong. Strong winter sun. Right in your eyes doesn't help the thing. Look at a lovely machine here in front of me. It's not mine, I wish it was, but it's not. Right, just have to be very careful here. You can see the ground. Just have to be real conny where I go. But look at down here, the back of the cottage. We have a, what is it, JCB 535-140. Some of you might understand. I wouldn't know very little about JCBs, but nice looking machine. So there's lads working on the road. I think they're working for the telephone company. And they're out cutting down trees or touching the telephone lines. And I met them yesterday on the road and he asked me, would I know of anywhere they could put that vehicle for the weekend until they come back? And behind the cottage, the safe, safe can be. Maybe we'll put in some silage with it over the weekend. But yeah. But yeah, grand looking machine, a nice big heavy duty cage in the front of it. Anyway, let's change a pipe here and play on to my own job. I reverse back there a wee bit. Because when I go over here, I'm going to be coming against a hill. So I want my tank to be light as it can possibly be before I get to that hedge way on the far side. So I can pull slightly uphill. But you can see the cattle were in there yesterday. You see the way they just tramped it one day. They're down below on the bog now. We let them down yesterday. If you see us on our Instagram, you'd see that. But um, hopefully they'll fit the graze out. There's another man heading over with pipes there on the far side. So we're at load number 11, which is great. That's 22,000 gallons of slurry out, which is a nice wee bit of slurry. Good news is we're not making any real mess of the field. Just a wee bit platty around the gate. But otherwise, not a problem. But one thing I don't like to see is that big massive dark black cloud over there and the rain starting to fall on the windscreen on the bonnet here. So the bad news is, it rained. Not heavy, but constant. And enough, well, this is the only part that got caught up, but enough just to start to get the thing clatty. That was a pity because things were drying up all the time and we're just getting away lovely with no mess, no nothing. I was so surprised, but that's just the way this weather goes this year. But there's good news. The good news is the tank's not full. And the reason it's not full is because that tank is empty. We only have a half load on this now. We've took everything we can take out of it and it's emptied right to the ground. So, slurry is officially done. Thanks be to Jesus. So now we are finished but there's one job I want to do learning from my mistakes last year and that is I want to flush a bit of water through this macerator and um, now the story we were putting out wasn't terribly thick anyway but at the same time last year when I came back to this macerator there was a couple of pipes stuffed and it was just purely down to not flushing a bit of water through it when you're gonna leave it sitting for two or three months it's a good idea it only takes a few minutes to do and it'll save you a lot of bother in the long run So now we're back home and one very final thing which is even equally as important if not more important is the way we prep our macerator um, when we're leaving it sitting over the winter time. Now I didn't do it properly last year and I learned my lesson by learning that the thing can actually 
weld itself together by rust very very quickly actually inside I had a quite a tough job trying to get the macerator working last spring and um, it took quite a while to free it up and first of all I'm trying to block this wind because I have no mic with me Let's loosen these two bys off Sometimes you might need a wee tip of a hammer just to get it move which I will again oh. Well it doesn't get much more odd than this and I promise you nothing on this is pre put in or anything I haven't touched this right but there is a screwdriver stuck in the teeth of the macerator stuck in the hole and stuck on the slicing teeth between both it's loose but it'll not pull out I'll have to move the macerator ever so slightly to get it out but I am very very how would it even spin with that in it all right so I'm just editing this and I just stopped it for a second because the more I look at it, it just looks like someone opened it and just pushed that screwdriver into it. And I was showing it even here to Sinead, and she said the same. Are you sure you didn't push that in yourself? It just looks exactly like that's what happened. But I assure you, I didn't. I definitely did not. When I opened it, this is what greeted me. The screwdriver sits on the outside of the house now, because I did pull at it for a while off camera to see what it comes straight out, and it didn't. Um, so it's very odd. It's very, very odd. And the more I think about it, the odder it seems. But this is exactly what did greet me. That is not one of my screwdrivers, so I cannot blame myself on this one. Where it came from, it looks fresh. It doesn't look like something that's been sitting in a slurry tanker either. Or it'll be all stained, and it's not. I haven't given my tank to anybody else either, not recently. So, unless it was laying in the bottom of a tank from another time someone else used it. Anyway, I'll have to get out. Hopefully it hasn't done any harm. I don't see anything broken. That is, that's a unusual one now. What brand is that even? F E L O, never had it. Yeah, that's an odd one. That is an odd one. Anyway, it doesn't seem to have done any harm. Stone tap's another thing that you might overlook. You mightn't think you have to open it as often as you have to. Every 10 load, I have to open this. Well, 10 to 15 load, I have to open it. And when I bought this dribble bar, and seeing the inside of my tank before the dribble bar went on, there wasn't an ounce of stones or greater retin into it. And I said to myself, our tanks must be relatively clean. So I will admit I used it a long time in the beginning, not realizing that the stone trap was completely full. Especially the one in the yard, which can have a lot of grit in it because cows come in to the yard first and they bring it in on their feet. Just the 804 or the dust that is on the top sticks to their feet with the mud and then it comes into the yard and then it goes into the bottom of the tank. So I know there's a lot of sediment in the bottom of that tank now. This is all grit, and that is full again. Again, that was about 15 loads since I emptied it. So I'm gonna to have to empty it more often than that. But it just goes to show there's even animals teeth and everything in it. You can see the macerator now, it's a bit dark in there, but you can already see the scale and stuff that's already on the sides of it. So I'm just gonna go around here. I was actually gonna use white grease but I think I'm going to change now I'm going to use some diesel and oil because it'll get into more places and it'll soak through it all just spray it in and yeah that'll work wonders so now what we have here is a mixture of hydraulic oil and diesel great for spraying onto machinery and stuff if you leave it over the winter time it will prevent them from rusting but I will say I'm sorry if there's a lot of wind blowing in the background I had a lovely wireless mic Rode 2 wireless an expensive bugger of a thing but i took it out the last day we were bringing in our cows you might remember if you watched that video and it was raining quite badly and i knew it wasn't waterproof but i thought it would have stood up to it but unfortunately it's buggered and it's destroyed so that's a good few hundred euro just down the drain i've only used it a few times but the reality is the work that we're doing here especially when you're working with oil or working in machinery or working out in the elements where it's pouring rain a lot of the times these wireless mics are just they can't stand up to that kind of abuse they're fine in a good clean environment or when you're maybe just interviewing somebody but doing this kind of work 
even the cameras themselves do suffer quite badly with hydraulic oil on your hands and diesel and then you're touching the camera it doesn't really help the thing but anyway so we'll just spray this on in there like that with a good coating be afraid to put it on Now and finally, this might seem a wee bit odd to some people as well, but I degrease it now rather than greasing it in the springtime. And the reason I do that is the same with all the equipment that I have. Reason being it keeps the water out of all the joints, it pushes out any water that's there and protects it for over the winter as well. So rather than do it in the springtime, at least when I come along then in the springtime, it's ready to work. You don't have to start rooting at it then, maybe when you're under more pressure. Right, well that's it. I just wanted to show you that wee bit in the end and by God am I glad I opened that macerator and found that. Still shocked to find it, especially in the position that it was stuck in. But anyway, it didn't do any harm. It looks to be running all right, so that's the main thing. But just how it got there is bizarre and where it came from is even more bizarre. Anyway, that's how it agrees and I'm learning by mistakes. Look, not everybody does this. You don't have to do what I do. Everybody does things their own way. I'm just showing you the way I do it now when i've learned because the last time i opened this it took a while to get it going it worked eventually but it was seized solid and um, so i didn't know that you had to actually when you think about it it makes sense slurry does corrode everything it touches now that i know i'll keep it right and look at it prolongs the life of it it doesn't cost really anything to do so it's worth doing uh, the only other thing i'll do with this now is give it a hell of a good wash down and that'll be it for the winter time it'll not be sitting idle over the winter because i will be drawing over to the other tank probably around December and start drawing over to it and we also have a tank in the yard the dairy washes tank which we do suck out of and blow it into another tank so it's always kept moving and um, but one thing I might do on this tank we'll have to have a look at it first and see is I might put new brakes on it before the springtime otherwise than that it's been trouble free good old tank for its age didn't cost a whole pile does its job well anyway guys thanks for watching see you in the next one